Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my complete Wanderer guide. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Wanderer or Scaramouche, the newest five-star character in Genshin Impact, released in version 3.3 alongside Farazhan, and he's a character who people have been waiting for for a very long time now. In this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know regarding this character and how to build him, covering his best artifacts, weapons, play styles, teams, constellations, and including a C0 showcase of Wanderer at the end of the video. Wanderer is a pretty unique DPS character, and so I really want to go into as much detail as possible in this video, giving you guys all the information that I know about one of my new favorite characters. Now before we begin, do keep in mind a few things. First of all, as Wanderer just came out, I do want you guys to know that I have had extra time to play him on the media server before he came out on the live servers, which is why I get to give you guys this information so fast. And I also want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested. With all that being said, let's get into it. Alright, so starting things off, let's talk about the Wanderer's ability and playstyle, and cover how to get the most value out of his kit. So the main thing you need to know is that the Wanderer is a character who you're going to be using on field as either a DPS or a driver spamming normal and charge attacks as he floats in midair with his elemental skill. In fact, the way this works is that all of his attacks will be infused with Animo since he is a catalyst, but when you use his elemental skill, you activate the wind favored stance, where his normal and charge attacks will gain a bonus scaling on top of the regular one, making them very powerful. During this phase, the Wanderer will jump up into the sky with a first initial hit of AoE and Emo damage, and then buffing all of his attacks inside of the stance. This stance lasts for a certain amount of time, basically until you run out of points, and every action you do inside of the stance will consume points, so you gain a sort of new stamina bar that contains 100 points, and every time you do an attack, or a dash, or you decide to float up higher, which is something that I don't usually recommend doing, but you can, your points will be consumed until you run out of points and you fall back down. Do note that even if you're doing nothing inside of the stance, your points do diminish just as you float, so you will constantly be losing points inside of your skill. With that said, this ability is great, and it's going to be the main source of your Skara's damage. It infuses your normal and charge attacks, and your playstyle is going to therefore revolve around it, you're going to set up all your support character's abilities, then go into your Wanderer, use your elemental skill, and spam normal and charge attacks with the pretty great scaling that it has when paired with your original scaling. And if that wasn't enough, this ability only has a 6 second cooldown, which isn't too bad. On top of that, the Wanderer also has two passive talents that buff his damage inside of his skill, notably by giving you a free dash reset, or a chance at a free dash reset as you're normal attacking, when you are inside of your elemental skill. Once you do proc this special descent effect, you will gain a free dash that doesn't consume any of the points of your elemental skill, and that will fire off four wind arrows to whatever enemy you're fighting. Because of that, it's just a nice bonus in damage and also a free dash, which is very important because it means you get to dodge attacks or reposition very easily without spending any of the points or the stamina that your elemental skill uses. On top of just that, when your elemental skill comes into contact with a swirlable element, being either Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, you will gain a certain buff to your elemental skill, which is honestly going to be a very strong passive. In fact, you can have up to two of these buffs out at the same time, and each of the buffs are honestly pretty good good, with Hydro increasing the point cap by 20, so increasing how long you're inside of your elemental skill for, Pyro increasing your attack by 30%, Cryo increasing your crit rate by 20%, which is huge, and Electro passively restoring your energy as you do normal and charge attack. Because of that, and because of the fact that you can have two of these buffs out at the same time, it can be very smart to play him with powerful elemental supports, enabling not only powerful reactions, but also buffing your Skaramouche himself through these bonus passives that you will be gaining. For more information on this though, I do highly recommend watching the team section of this video, where I will be covering this character's synergy with many different supports. Lastly, Wander's Elemental Burst is a very straightforward ability where he does this big and honestly very badass kick in front of him, dealing multiple instances of AoE and Emo damage, hitting all of the enemies in front of him five times with his skill, and this ability does have a pretty good scaling on a 15 second cooldown and a 60 energy cost. Do keep in mind, while this damage is really good, it's not as essential to his kit as his elemental skill, which is your main source of damage, so we're going to go into more detail as to how often you're going to be using this ability a bit later in the video when we talk about advanced tips and combos, but for now, just keep in mind that you want to be using this ability whenever you have it, but it isn't your number one priority, meaning that even if you have to use it every other rotation instead of every single rotation, it's still fine as your elemental skill is going to be what you're prioritizing and what you are building around, with your burst just being a nice bonus source of burst damage whenever you do have it, but as I said, there will be more information on that later. Before moving on, I do want to say that for your talent priority, your normal attack is going to be first, then your elemental skill, both of them being very important as their scalings do add up for your normal and charge attacks inside of your skill, and lastly, your elemental burst is also pretty nice to level, but not quite as important. Now, very quickly, before moving on to how to build Wanderer, I do want to include a small section talking about my initial thoughts on this character. Now, first of all, I want to say that I think he's really fun personally. I know that's subjective, but I personally feel like he's similar to Shao, who's my favorite character in the sense that he like floats in the air, has a very unique playstyle, and is just another Animo boy to carry your team. Now, in terms of how good he is as a character, it's still pretty early to tell because he just came out, but it does look like he's a strong 
doesn't carry a good Animo DPS. However, I do think that his exact power level still varies quite heavily on a few things, notably Farzan, who is a good support for him even at C0, but is much, much better at C6. Like genuinely, I don't know if I've seen a more constellation dependent character than her in the sense that yes, she's still usable at C0, but not only does she need an ungodly amount of energy recharge unless you run three Animo in a team, but she also just buffs your Wanderer's overall team DPS so significantly at C6 compared to without it, that your experience with this character will definitely go up if you have her C6. While again, I don't think he's dependent on her 6 constellation, because I think at C0, she's still a good character to pair with him, but a replaceable one. At C6, your team DPS goes up significantly and makes him a stronger unit meta-wise. Also, something else to keep in mind is that as a Catalyst user, his like base HP and stuff is a bit lower, so do be careful when you're playing him, as you also don't have any resistance interruption, which is very annoying. You can get knocked around a lot while playing Skara, which is why I would recommend either using your long range or using a shield to prevent you from getting knocked around everywhere and getting interrupted. With that said, I did think it was important for me to include these like criticisms in this video, but I also think that he's an incredibly fun character to play. He is one of my personal favorites, but I don't want anyone to feel forced to pull for him because I think he's good. He's definitely good enough to pull for if you like him without being mandatory. All right, now moving on, let's talk about how to actually build your Wanderer. Starting things off, let's talk about the artifact sets that you want on this character. Well, first of all, his new set that was made for him, the Desert Pavilion, is going to typically be your go-to. This new set is going to be his best overall because the two-piece gives you 15% anyone damage bonus, and then the four-piece set will increase your normal attack speed by 10%, while also increasing your normal charge and plunge attacks by 40% for 15 seconds. Now, do keep in mind, in order to proc this four-piece set, you do need to do a charge attack first that hits an opponent, but that is very easy to do anyways, since you can do that at the start of your rotation, and the 40% buff that you're gaining, along with the attack speed and anemo damage, makes this set really powerful for your overall Wanderer's damage, and just the best general set for Wanderer. Now, with that said, it is a new artifact set. You may already have other sets pre-farmed, and it may not be worth going for this set specifically, but I did want to make it clear, starting things off, that it is his go-to signature set, the best one overall, by usually around 5 to 10 to sometimes 15%. Because of that, if you have this set, definitely go for the 4-piece, but if you don't, here are some alternatives. First of all, the 4-piece Reminiscence set is going to be a close second, generally speaking, not that far behind, as the main drawback of the set is that you lose energy, because what it does is give you 18% attack on the 2-piece, and then the 4-piece will give you 50% damage to your normal charge or plunge attacks, but at the cost of 15 energy when you use your skill. Because of that, the damage that this set gives you is really high, but you do need to make sure you can actually manage your energy, play around this weakness, and still try to get your burst out every two rotations, which is typically going to be recommended. It isn't quite as good as Desert Pavilion, but it is a good option that isn't too far behind if you do have it. Similarly, the four-piece echoes can be good as well, as this one will give you attack percent and buff your normal attack damage quite significantly, but do keep in mind that this set apparently works a lot better at low ping. There's weird interactions where it can be more difficult or more inconsistent to proc its effect at higher ping, so just do bear that in mind, but it is a good option for the normal attack increase you get, assuming you are spamming normal attacks over charge attacks. Moving on, you can also mix and match two pieces, being any of the attack percent two pieces and any of the anemo damage two pieces, either the new Desert or Verdescent Venerer, which are all good and very resin efficient options as you probably have already farmed them and are definitely viable for Wanderer if you don't have his best in slot set. Moving on, I did also want to mention Verdes and Venerer because while this set may not seem to be the most appealing for Wanderer himself because he is an on-field damage dealer, I do believe while the two-piece set is universal, the four-piece set can also be good on him if you are playing him specifically as a driver, as a solo Animo carry in a team with very powerful elemental supports like Sing Cho, Yalan, Fischl, Beidou, Shangling, or many others that we'll cover in the team section. Now, do keep in mind, I would not recommend using this set on your Scar if you have another Animo character like Farazan or Venti who can run this set, but if you're running him as your only Animo character, then it can actually be viable to run this set on him to maximize your team's DPS by reducing the resistance of the elements that you swirl, especially when you consider the fact that you can swirl multiple elements at the same time, like for example, Hydro and Electro. Lastly, I wanted to mention that a few niche artifact sets like Blizzard Strayer, Lava Walker, and Thunder Soother can be viable if played with their respective elements, but is typically not going to be what I recommend. Overall though, I do recommend either mix and matching two pieces, going Reminiscence if you already have it farmed, or using his best in slot, Desert Pavilion, if you do want to farm for a new domain, as in my opinion, it can be worth it given that it is his best set. All right, now with all that information out of the way, what stats do you actually want on Wander? Well, generally speaking, since he's a character who scales on attack, the best stats for his personal DPS are going to be crit, so crit rate and crit damage, and also attack percent is nice as well. Now, other stats can be nice, like for example, some energy recharge can be okay, but do keep in mind that regarding energy recharge and his burst, it isn't as vital as you may think. While his burst is good damage, it does seem to be optimal to usually use his burst every two rotations instead of every single rotation, although this can depend on your team comp and how many Animo units you're running. The reason I say this is because many times 
times, especially if he's paired with Farazan only as another Anemo option. It can be very difficult to get your burst back on cooldown unless you have a ton of energy recharge. We're talking around 170. Since you can need so much ER to consistently use your burst every 15 seconds, it is typically not recommended to do so and to use his burst whenever you have it, usually once every two rotations, allowing you to instead focus on more offensive stats like crit damage, crit rate, and attack percent instead of having to constantly build energy recharge. Now, while I'll talk about this a bit more later in the video as well, and this can depend on, for example, if you're running three Anemo units and then you can use your burst way more often, generally speaking, energy recharge can be a nice substat, but is not as mandatory as you may think, as using your burst every two rotations is perfectly fine and usually going to be the meta, especially if you're not running a set that drains your energy and are using a more standard build. And so overall, those are the stats you're looking for. And if you're wondering, Elemental Mastery isn't that vital on Skara, as the damage from your swirl reactions are not going to be your focus. Because of that, you are looking for attack percent on the sands, a Nemo damage bonus on the goblet, and crit rate or crit damage on the circlet. Alright, now moving on, let's talk about the Wanderer's best weapons. First of all, it should be no surprise to anyone that his signature weapon is going to be his best, as the amount of stats that it gives you on this massive effect is honestly just insane. It has a very high base attack with a pretty decent crit stat, while also increasing your normal attack speed and normal attack damage as you do normal attacks. Because of that, this is going to be your go-to weapon if you pulled for it, and a pretty good one overall. However, do note that Wander has a lot of really good options, so you shouldn't feel forced to pull for a signature weapon. In fact, every 5-star catalyst that's out right now is good for him, notably Lost Prayer, giving you crit rate and a good effect, and the Kuguro's Verity, giving you a ton of crit damage, are both good options for Wander because of the stats that they give you. On top of that, Skyward Atlas and even Memory of Dust can also be good, but do keep in mind, since these weapons give you a ton of attack percent, their value increases if you are not running Bennett and decreases a bit if you are, as you will get diminishing returns when you just get a ton of attack percent, but even just in general, all of these 5-star catalysts are pretty good, with the crit ones being my personal favorites, as I do think running him with Bennett is very good. With that said though, he also has really good 4-star catalysts, like the generic crit ones are good for him, but also a old event weapon if you do have it, which was given for free and the refinements were free to play as well, the Dodoko Tails is a really good option if you do have it. This weapon increases your charge attack damage significantly, which can make spamming charge attacks a very good option, as this weapon at refinement 5 gives you a ton of bonus damage while also giving you attack percent, making it a good option. It is similar to the other 4 stars that we're going to talk about, notably Solar Pearl and Widsith, depending on your team and playstyle. Because of that, if you have Dodoko, it can be very good to use, and the same can be said with Widsith, especially with Refinement, which is a weapon that is especially good for one rotation or if you can clear fast, but even for two or more rotations, Widsith is still a good option because it gives you a ton of crit damage and an effect that gives you either a ton of attack percent, which is great, a ton of elemental damage, which is also amazing, or a bunch of elemental mastery, which is usually not that good for Wander, but the average of the three is still very good as two of the three buffs are great, and you can always reset if you get the wrong buff or find other ways to play around it. Similarly, Solar Pearl is a very good weapon, this one giving you crit rate instead of crit damage, while also buffing your normal attack, skill, and burst damage as you use your abilities and attack on your character. Because of that, the go-to options are first of all going to be either any 5-star that you have, if not, Witsith can be really good, especially within its niche or for short fights, Solar Pearl and Dodoko Tails are very consistent, Solar Pearl more for normal attacks and Dodoko Tails more for charge attacks, while also being a free-to-play weapon that you may have, and all three of these being similar in strength and very good options. Do keep in mind, if you don't have any of these and you missed the event for the free-to-play Dodoko Tails, your best bet is typically going to be a lot worse than the alternatives, like either the Mappa Mare or the Blackcliff Agate, which isn't a bad weapon, but I don't really like Blackcliff Catalysts, as there's so many good Catalyst options out there that are better, but both of these can be fine as a free-to-play if you don't have Dodoko Tails. Do keep in mind, though, that all the weapons that I mentioned thus far are good, and their exact strength does vary based on whether you're normal or charge attacking, and also if you're running buff characters like Bennett or Farazan. With that said, I'll put weapon rankings on screen right now to give you guys a general idea of how good each weapon is, but do keep in mind that, as I said, these do vary heavily based on your team, what supports you're running, and how many normal and charge attacks you're doing. Other things to note regarding weapon ranking are that there's a lot more variables, like for example, since your normal attacks have a very small AoE compared to charge attacks, normal attacking focused weapons, like his signature bell, can lose some value in AoE against a lot of enemies, as charge attacking would gain more value. On top of that, do note that your combo does vary, with your Ascension 4 passive that makes it to where you want to dash every single time you proc the passive, and get a free dash with bonus instances of Anemo damage. Do feel free though, to use any good option you already have leveled, as all of the 5 star options are great, and many of the generic DPS 4 star catalysts, especially with refinement, are also very good, and even similar in strength. Next up, I wanted to add a very short but important section regarding the Wander's advanced tips, and some combos to keep in mind. First of all, regarding the attack strings you want to be doing, this does depend, there's a few good ones, but generally it's going to either be spamming 3 normal attacks, or N3, as your third one deals 2 instances of damage, and has a pretty high scaling. Something else you can do is do 2 normal attacks into a charge attack, 
attack or even just straight up charge attack spamming as you can see here which is especially good in aoe against large amounts of enemies or with charge attacking weapons like the dodoko tails something else you should note is that you can animation cancel most things like notably your attacks by dashing so for example you're doing three normal attacks here you can just as soon as the animation like is fired you can just cancel with a dash or whatever and this is especially important with your passive talent that procs randomly as you are normal attacking in fact whenever this ability procs you'll notice your scaramouche will sort of light up or the ring around him will light up and then you'll typically want to dash as soon as possible to fire off those four wind arrows dealing more damage getting a free dash for repositioning and also resetting the passive so that you can proc it as many times as possible also there is an audio cue that i found is very easy to identify so for example if i'm auto attacking you hear that sound that it just made, that means that when I dash, uh, my passive was procced and it will fire those attacks. On top of that, I also wanted to mention that once you use your elemental skill, you should start by immediately using a charge attack if you are running Scar's signature set, the Desert Pavilion, in order to proc its effect. On top of that, for your elemental burst, while I did mention that you should use it whenever you have it, usually once every two rotations, unless you're running like three Anemo characters that give you a ton of energy, as it is good but not the main part of your kit. I would typically recommend using it at the start before using your elemental skill so it doesn't take up any of the time of your elemental skill. Now, there are some exceptions here. For example, if you are C2, which we'll talk about in the next section, you want to use your burst near the end of your skill's duration to maximize the buffs from your C2. Or if you are on the Reminiscence set, then you want to make sure you're using your skill first to actually get the buffs from the Reminiscence set, and then use your burst a bit later once you get the energy back. Now, moving on for the Wanderer's Constellation, they're honestly quite good. Well, I plan on keeping mine, at least for now at C0, despite me having access to all six on this account, as these aren't the live servers. I do want to say that Scaramouche does have some good constellations that you actually can go for, notably C2 as the first stopping point, and also a pretty good C6 if you want to go all the way. An advantage to pulling for his constellations as well is that you can get C6 Farazan along the way, but I do want to be cautious about recommending this, as I don't want you to feel forced to pull for constellations, as Wanderer is a good character even at C0. With that said, getting his first two constellations constellations can be advantageous as his first one increases his attack speed inside of his skill and will also buff the free dash that you get through your passive talent by giving you another instance of damage when you do dash. Your second constellation is going to be a really good one and probably the most valuable one if you do choose to pull for constellations as it will significantly increase your burst damage. In fact, it buffs your burst when you use it inside of your skill based on how many points are missing from your full bar for a maximum of 200% bonus damage. Because of that, if you have your second constellation, you want to be using your burst at the the end of your skill, like right before the stamina bar expires, to maximize the damage bonus that you're gaining. This constellation makes your burst a lot better and makes it to where using your burst is much more appealing. Moving on, your third and fifth constellation increase your talent levels. Your fourth one will give your passive another elemental infusion, a random one that you don't have, and allows you to get three buffs at the same time. So, for example, if you're running a pyro and electro support, you will also randomly get either a hydro or cryo buff, which can be just a nice little bonus. Lastly, your C6 is a really big one, kind of similar to your Emiya C6, where you're getting another instant of damage alongside your attacks in your elemental skill, dealing 40% of the attack's original damage, while also regening some points for you while you fall under 40, making your skill last longer, and also increasing the damage of your attacks. And so overall, Wanderer's Constellations are pretty decent, especially because Farazan is also on the banner and she also wants Constellations, but as I said, they are not needed and C0 is perfectly good. However, C2 is a good stopping point if you do want to pull for Constellations. Alright, now moving on, let's get into one of the most important sections of this video, which is regarding the Wanderer's best teams. In order to build a Wander team, there's actually a lot of different ways, but it's mainly split into two, either running him with Farzan or running him without her. In fact, he can either be ran as a hyper carry on field damage dealer with support characters that buff his damage, or you could also run him as a driver where he's still on field doing strong normal and charge attacks, but with off field supports that do a ton of damage burst DPSs like Fischl, Beto, Synchro, Rosario, or others like that that we'll talk about. Now starting things off, I do want to talk about Farzan and Wander's synergies with her. While I talked about her briefly earlier in the video, and I do plan on making a future guide on this character specifically, I do want to say, at least right now, that she does have really good synergy with Anemo carries like Wanderer or Shao. This is because her burst will buff your Anemo damage and decrease the resistance of opponents to Anemo, making your just overall Anemo damage from someone like Wanderer much higher, while also buffing it with your Ascension passive as well. Now, as you can see, her base kit is already good for buffing Anemo characters, but at C0, in my opinion, while she's good and I still recommend her, she isn't someone that you absolutely need. However, she will need an un 
with all the amount of energy recharge, unless you're running three Anemo characters in your team, like around 250 to even 300 energy recharge, which can make her difficult to build and annoying to play. Because of that, I believe that at C0, she's a good support for your Wanderer, but then at C2 and C6, she does get much better, with her six constellation giving you even more damage while also passively generating more energy. Moving on, what is your team gonna look like? Well, if you choose to run Wanderer with Farzan, the two other options are flexible. Usually I would recommend using Bennett as your healer and supportive option because he just gives you an insane amount of attack and is just a broken character overall. If you do choose to run Bennett, your last slot can be someone that deals a lot of damage or that buffs your Wanderer. It can be someone like Venti in AoE as having a third Anemo option to give you energy is great while also dealing really good damage and having great synergy with Wanderer. As you can see from the footage on screen, Venti and Wanderer have really good synergy with one another against large groups of enemies that can be displaced by Venti, although he does struggle a bit in single target or against larger enemies. Now with that said, in a Wander Farzan teams, there's a lot of different options that work very well. You can run Bennett Toma as a shield character is great for Wanderer who is a very vulnerable unit while he's on field attacking. He's a catalyst user who can get one-shotted quite easily, so having a shield like Toma works very nicely. On top of that, Toma can run a Favonius Lance and has a six constellation that synergizes quite nicely with our Scaramouche. On top of that, something you want to keep in mind while team building is Scara's Ascension passive that actually gives you buffs based on the infusions of your elemental skill. Now, since you can have two of these at the same time, running characters of different elements can also be beneficial, although typically having resonances also have their advantages. Because of that, many support characters can work quite nicely. I personally really like cryo supports like Rosaria for good damage or Layla for a defensive option that gives you a shield, which is very valuable on Skara. And you can either go double cryo with Layla, Rosaria, and then either Farazon or a Hydro option, or you could do a cryo Hydro. But do keep in mind that in this team, they would both need a lot more energy recharge. If that was enough, as you guys saw, you can run teams without Farazon as well, like a Taser team with Electro or Hydro supports. Fischl, Beto, Singcho, Yalan all work very nicely. And you can also run Wander with characters like Shangling in either a standard national team, or once again, you can even run Farazan here and then run double Pyro. If that wasn't enough, there's also other characters that work very nicely. For example, Jean, especially with constellations, can be very good as her second, mainly her fourth constellation, are great for increasing your Skara's damage. Also, excuse that I'm still saying Skara, Mush, and Wander interchangeably as I'm still used to saying Skara, but obviously it's the same thing. Other characters that can work are technically Yunjin to increase your normal attack damage, but I personally don't really like her without another Geo as she needs a lot of energy. Although a character like Zhongli can also work with Skara as a just powerful shield that also shreds any more resistances, mainly because I do value having a shield with Wander, at least for most players, as getting interrupted while you're normal attacking is very annoying. So characters like Toma, Layla, or Zhongli can all work quite nicely. Lastly, in case you're wondering, I wanted to say that Shangling's Pyronado does work with Skara even when he's floating in the air, as it does stay on the ground, so it will constantly deal damage to everything around you, but something like Kaya's Icicles doesn't, as those follow you up in the air, so I wouldn't recommend using Kaya over someone like Rosaria or even Layla. And so those are some example teams and guidelines that you can follow to build a good Wander team. Do keep in mind, they are very flexible, as I said, you're either running him with Farazan and then two flex options, which can be Bennett, and then a powerful off-field support like Fischl or any of the others that I mentioned, a third Anemo, or you can do double Pyro, double Cryo, one Cryo, one Hydro, or even a Taser variation. There's really a lot that you can do. Do keep in mind that if you're running him without Farazan as the solo Anemo, you can run the four Verdescent Venera set to buff off-field supports like in a team like this one, or even one with Shangling if you do choose to run Sing Cho instead of Farazan. Do keep in mind there's a lot of flexibility here, and since this character still came out, there's still a lot of new teams that will be discovered. So if there's anything I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment. But for now, feel free to try out which teams work best for you, as all of the ones I showed in this video are viable and good options that you can use depending on the characters you have available. With that said, we're now going to get into the showcase. I'm going to be using some of my favorite teams, which personally have been this one, this one, and also a cryo-centered team. My Wander and my Farazan are both Constellation Zero, with my Wander being on the Reminiscent set, since I don't have the new one yet, on a R5 Witsith, which is a four-star weapon, but with Constellations, and on a very good ratio. With that said, I hope the guide was helpful, and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go.
So yeah, that's about it. Scaramouche is finally here, and I hope you enjoyed my guide and showcase of this character. Personally, he's one of my favorite characters overall. I find him really fun, but meta-wise, I do think it does depend on the team you're running, and especially if you do have a C6 or a C0 Farazan and the differences between them. With that said, expect more content like this coming out soon, notably a Farazan video, and potentially an account review of a fully constellated Wanderer, if that does interest you. As always, if there's anything new regarding this character, it will be in a pinned comment. And with that being said, I hope the guide was helpful, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.